This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni and pizza. Production services by Sidekick Media Services. And listeners like you supporting us at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast, and this is a special edition uh, for our off weeks. There, we're recording earlier in the Christmas season uh, so that we can take a little bit of breather. I need a breather. I need a break, guys. I just generally need a break. I want to play video games for two weeks. I'm probably doing it right now as this thing broadcasts. But, anyways, we're still, we're not going to leave you without the awesome. We had a couple great ideas for uh, this, uh, this period here. So, uh, so first of all, Back in the studio, I gotta be careful because of the cl- because of people on the show. I might announce the wrong podcast. <laughs> first of all, in the studio on the couch is Nutters. This is the first time I've been on the couch and ever. Yeah, <laughs> well be- over a year. Since what the beginning of COVID, probably. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. And you are if you're on if you're on the audio version, she is decked out. <laughs> she is. Come on, give give the rundown. I have my baby Yoda shirt that i just recently got it says i i don't know if you can see the back here hold on i'll try to turn around it says it, it says <laughs> giant mandalorian across the back that's amazing <laughs> like giant like huge, huge. holy you know hell and then i have uh very sparkly ears uh mickey mouse ears and a big bow on these particular ears uh covered in bedazzled um are we are we saying why we're doing this show? Is this? Oh, oh, we, I guess we haven't done that yet. I guess I guess you'll figure it out afterwards. Well, there <laughs> should be a label when when, when anybody's uh, uh, talk, talk, checked into this. Uh, but also with us is Mad Mike. He usually joins me on the Wrestling Mayhem show, and he's here for a very particular reason. Hey, <laughs> hey, do the audio turnaround for us uh, of what you're wearing now. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do the same thing. Uh, I prefer to be called Mary Mike. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, oh, in Mary Mike. Mode. Yes. Yeah, because you know it's holiday season. Mm-hmm. Um, I I'm wearing a a lovely Star Wars uh, Christmas Santa hat mm-hmm. with uh, Wookiees and Ewoks and, and droids galore. I'm also wearing a a, um, a half velour, half not velour green Disney sweatshirt. And uh, on the back... Oh, we're, we're all doing the turnaround. It, it does say Walt Disney World on it, there. I'm you not guys sure have the same... They really like to put the logo like giant across the back of the sweater like across your arm shoulder space there don't they this is this just a thing they're doing uh it's something that they did back like back in the 70s oh it's a oh so this is like a retro design almost it's a throwback i get it there those um these shirts are come in a variety of different characters Mm -hmm. colors uh there was some sparkly Mm -hmm. ones and holiday ones (laughs) and Nice, nice. So this is the Disney spectacular episode of the Awesome Cast because <laughs> both of you. It seems I feel like sometimes I'm the only person who hasn't been to Disney, and I mean the, in the fall, because uh, <laughs> it felt like everybody I knew went to Disney. You guys both both uh, went over, uh, within the last like what month and a half, right? Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Katie, you just came, as of this recording you came back like a week ago, I yeah. think. Uh, <laughs> so so we thought you you know was brought up like do an awesome the awesomeness of Disney. Uh, you know I, I you know Disney comes up in Star stories for like technology and what they're doing of course the geekery that we all enjoy uh, we talk about on awesome cast and especially on the monday night show for the wrestling mayhem show so i i don't know i well first of all for both of you was this your is this was this your first time at disney for both of you and mike i know you've been there before but but uh, katie you've been there before too yeah right? yeah i think this yeah. is my third trip to disney third trip to disney third so you're fourth. you're veterans at this point so oh no not yeah. not if you <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> last time i went was 98 so mm-hmm. <laughs> absolutely I- I'm kind of a veteran, but I was going uh, with my wife, who hadn't been since she was three. Oh, there you go. So, there so that go. was that was a that was a fun trip. That was a, that was an experience in and of itself, and uh, yeah, it was it was a good time. Nice, because I, I basically organized the entire trip. Mm-hmm. So, like, I made the hotel reservations, uh, set up everything on the apps for everyone. Like, cause there are multiple apps <sighs> that you can have in your Disney stay to enhance your park experience. Oh, that, that's yeah. Because I know, I know Katie, we were talking about a little, you're talking about like what you need to do to get certain reservations. Like you were talking about like dinner with Mickey. So you had your, 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 uh, 
your your uh, you know your family and kids you know were, were part of it too so you had to do very particular things right Probably oh yeah that you yeah. Norm- normally wouldn't have right yeah my niece and nephew are six and three and it was their first trip and there were specific places we had to go mm-hmm. um just make sure we saw mickey we had a breakfast with mickey we had a lunch with minnie we had uh dinner at bell's castle uh, we did an Aloha. Oh, you you got in to be our guest? Uh, yeah, which, uh, so. <laughs> Jealous. We couldn't get in this time. Uh, so, yeah, so we did the be our guest thing. I don't know. <laughs> so, so I guess there's going to be a bunch of just like offshoots of us talking sure. about things. Sure. Um, mm-hmm. So with, with any sort of reservation like that, you have to do, I believe it was 60 days out from your actual trip yeah. date. At 6 a.m. and it's a free so for all it's, online. It's, it's like getting your iPhone pre-order in, right? Mm-hmm. It's like you gotta no, wake so up. No, so it gets harder than yeah. that. It's harder than that. Yeah, this is the it's hardest. It's harder thing. than that. Yeah. Wow. So there, there are there are countless thousands of iPhones that you can get on launch. If you want to get a reservation for be our guest, you need you need to be up. Mm-hmm. Like like it it otherwise you ain't fucking getting in. Yeah. <laughs> It's true. Just not I think we should tell Mike that this is a uh, PG-13 podcast. You so. ain't effing getting it. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Uh, it's no, PG-13, you're allowed one. So now, okay, there you, know, you go. It's out you of got the way. that out of the way. Out of the way. <laughs> there you go. Very special episode of... <laughs> so, yeah, so, I mean, it's... it's Because uh, it, to me, like, this has always been my thing with Disney. It's like, it seems... It, it, it sounds like I would it would be nerve wracking to try to go for me to do, to do things like that. You really got to put out your head, you're going to do everything you want to do. Like it's just not going to happen. It's like Comic Con. It's like Comic Con. Yeah, it is. It is like Comic Con. Like, like for Comic Con, you have your your panel list and everything like that. You figure out the stuff you want to do. You figure out the stuff you need to pre plan. Mm -hmm. Like if there's stuff you need to get reservations for, you get the reservations for. If there's stuff you need to make sure you have a block of time because you're going to be waiting online, that's something else you also have to factor in. Okay. 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 So, so tell me more. So, so, so tell me more about the preparation phase of <laughs> Disney, maybe uh, before we get into the what's new and, and and fresh over there. I we worked with a travel agent. Uh, my sister in law's friend, I believe, is I think she's their friends. Um, <laughs> was our travel agent, so she planned a lot of this. We told her a lot of the things we wanted to do. We were trying to get rooms near each other, and she did a lot of that. And we we ended up staying at a Disney resort. Mm-hmm. Um, art of animation was the one we stayed at and um but like as far as like the food the the restaurant reservations that was all us we had to do that um but she explained like because it's kind of interesting i don't know if you ran into it mad mike where you had to buy the tickets for the park and then essentially take it a step further and make a reservation for the specific park for the specific Mm -hmm. day Mm, which they it's very confusing because even after you do that, it keeps telling you to do that, especially on like my Disney experience. I'm like, I've yes. done it. Right. Right. So they make yep. you second guess yourself a lot too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the app could be a little bit more user friendly <sighs> as far as that goes. Um, but the, the good thing is if you, um, if you have a hopper, you don't have to make multiple reservations. You just have to make a reservation for the first park you plan on going to. And, and then, and then you can leave that park and go into another one after 2 p.m. And explain what a hopper is again. Uh, a hopper is when, like, you go to multiple multiple parks per day. Like, on our last day, um, we went to Animal Kingdom. Mm-hmm. And uh, we went to Animal Kingdom in the morning. We saw uh, a few things there. We went on one of the Avatar rides. We did a safari. Uh, and then we left at, like, uh, I guess, 2, something like that. Maybe 1, 2 o'clock, something like that. Went home. Um, my uh, wife and sister-in-law took naps. I went in the hot tub, and then we went back to the Magic Kingdom later that day. Nice, because we were doing the uh, the after hours Christmas spectacular. And so, like the hopper and the after hours thing, those are all extra and separate things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is all like the after hours Disney thing, especially for the the, the holiday stuff is also a limited number of tickets. Mm-hmm. So it's a thing you have to kind of get in advance too. Mm-hmm. I'm, yeah. I'm getting stressed just hearing about this, but, <laughs> but it's all about the experience. You get there and you you get the it's worth it getting there. You know, either way. So so tell me a little bit about like you've been there for a bit. You, you you've been there a few times. You know, obviously a lot is you know it's been a couple of years just even with the COVID and everything since you guys have been there last. So so what is kind of the new awesome things that you guys got to see? You know, is there any difference to the you know I, you know you know 
you talk about all there's all these apps and we've heard about RFID bands and, and things like that and we, we keep hearing all this kind of interesting stuff happening at Disney World like this. So so what what's kind of the coolest thing this year that you guys ran into? I think so one we'll talk about some of the tech. We'll pretend it's awesome cast. Sure. We're talking yeah. about some yeah, of the no, no, sure. definitely the te- the tech is all about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know. Did you bring your so you there's these things that are called magic bands and magic bands are not required. Mm-hmm. to go to disney and it's like the little rfid Hello. yeah it just looks like a little yeah. it, look, it, it yeah. looks mm-hmm. like it looks mm-hmm. like just the watch band that would come with an I, uh, apple watch yeah and you will tap mm-hmm. this thing like you think it's a phone or your fitbit all day long yeah if you wear yeah. it so the, the nice thing so staying at a disney resort this unlocks the hotel room mm-hmm. this is also what i touch to get into disney world um or any of the other parks uh, you can do it with your phone. Like you can unlock your room with your phone if you're staying at a Disney resort, or you can use your phone to, you know, get in. And you it, can also use your Apple Watch. Yes, mm-hmm. because it sits in your wallet. But um, I'll tell you what, it was much <laughs> easier for me to have a Magic Band on uh, for the room and stuff because I didn't have to pull my phone out mm-hmm. when your hands were full. Mm-hmm. And um, so I have a. This is my purple Magic Band, and um, because if you order them before you get there, they're cheaper. By the way, mm-hmm. FYI. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, sometimes when you go to the park, they have ones you can't get online, especially this Boba Fett one. Ooh. Yeah, isn't that, I definitely did not need this. Um, <laughs> I don't. You know, there's really no use now that I am home. But I definitely got uh, with the mythos- Mythosaur on it, and it says the Book of Boba Fett, and um, so they do some limited edition ones, and mm-hmm. I I had to have it. So after I got, you know, <laughs> after Hollywood, I bought this when we were at Hollywood Studios because I needed it. So that was one of the mm-hmm. things I had to buy. Yeah, I had a uh, a blue magic band that I had had from my last time at Disney. And they they told me they would still be fine uh, to work with this time. And it was. It, it worked out great. How long ago um, did you go? Then, uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, they said about two years of the battery. No, uh, no, it was like this was like four years ago. Oh, cool. That I went the last time. So. uh so yeah, but um, so I went on Space Mountain, and uh, Space Mountain, if you don't know, is a uh, is a darkened indoor roller coaster with lots of really quick twists and turns, no loops, but lots of really quick twists and turns, and I felt my magic band fall off my wrist, <laughs> and once you lose something in there, well, there's really no getting it back. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Dave's asking if the magic bands are waterproof. They are. Yeah. And um, because you know you have to wear them on Sp- Splash Mountain and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, luckily I was able to. I don't have it with me. It's in my bag somewhere. But uh, luckily, right outside of Space Mountain, you can buy another Magic Band. <laughs> and it was I, I bought another Magic Band. I bought a Mickey one, and I just the the cool thing about it. All you need was the app, the app to just scan the magic the the code on the Magic Band, and it pops right into your app, and nothing really changed which was nice. We also should mention that you can pay for things with your magic band. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So anywhere, pretty much anywhere you go on a Disney resort or the Disney parks, you can pay for things. And the nice thing is, is I have to put a code in. Mm -hmm. So there's no accidental purchases. (laughs) So, so, and, and is that, do you have to like kind of load that or is that like, like tied to your credit card? It's tied to your credit card, so okay, it's all correctly. within that app. Okay. It's it, yeah, everything is within that app. And um, did you use Genie Plus? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we can talk about Genie yeah. Plus too. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. So I I watched um a video a little bit earlier this week about the history of Fast Pass mm-hmm. because Fast Pass was what I used the last time I was at Disney, and um I remember when I called to make the reservation, they said that Genie Plus would be in effect, but they didn't have any details on what genie plus is uh and i i was talking to disney reps they didn't even know yet uh but genie plus is the new way of getting on your rides it's um called like you, know, you get on these certain virtual cubes mm-hmm. uh so you can reserve like there there are more popular rides like rise of the resistance or something like that where if you want to not wait in the standby line mm-hmm uh, you have to pay extra to get onto those rides. It doesn't happen uh, with many rides, but upon watching that video, that's something that they used to do on the regular. So this is something that has been done in Walt Disney for like 30 some odd years, 34 years, something like that. Okay. Um, but you don't have to pay extra for rides if you don't want to. If you're okay with standing in lines, you know, for some of them, then 
that's fine. But uh, the the Genie Plus, you uh, you scan through the rides that are in the park, and you reserve a time, and they tell you what time to come back. So you can do anything you want at that point, and then you come back at a certain time. You get like what the windows an hour. Correct. Letters? Yeah. yeah. But here's the yeah. thing. So Genie Plus is fifteen bucks a day, and Genie Plus on itself looks sounds amazing because you're allowed to reserve one ride per hour. Here's the thing: is if you reserve a ride, so you get to the park, let's say for nine or ten o'clock, and the first thing you could reserve is Pirates of the Caribbean at eleven. You have to wait till that 12 o'clock hour hits before you can try to reserve another ride. No, that's not true. Oh, it wouldn't let us. Like it was really, it, yeah. Like we could oh, only reserve weird. one thing at a time. Mm. And every time we tried to, they were like, you were not able to do well, that. Well, no, as soon as, as soon as we got on the ride, as soon as we got on the ride, like by the time we were off the ride, mm -hmm. we were able to reserve another Genie Plus ride. Yeah, it was it was whatever that time period that eleven to twelve, like whatever that hour was. It wasn't letting us reserve anything until we were outside that hour. Well, the nice thing is now you can like like appreciate other things happening in the park, right? In mm -hmm. in, in that time period in that area, right? So so yeah. th it's more kind of like, hey, we know we're hitting a ride an hour, and then we can just park, you know, mm -hmm. you know, park it up, it, like right. And like Rise of Resistance, so like Mike was saying, you have mm -hmm. to so to it's seventeen, yeah, like seventeen dollars extra per person mm -hmm. plus tax. Um, but you have to do, you have to try to get in that virtual queue at 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. So you have to, at 7 a.m., jump on the virtual queue, either for, this is also for the Ratatouille ride, um, yes. which is a virtual queue too. And so like at 7 a.m., you're trying to get in and then they give you the time slots that are available for Rise of the Resistance. And then you have to put in your information and like, I'll do all this stuff and hope that your time slot, you get it done before the time slots fill out, which mm -hmm. is... It's all, <laughs> it's, it's like little challenges throughout. It's like you're playing the Disney game. So yeah. like you'll always see the Disneyland, Disney World. I mean, there was always a Disneyland game all the way back to like, like the NES, right? That, yeah. I don't think I played much of it, but there's, I saw there's one on like Xbox. It was like, <laughs> is, is the game just trying to get on fast passes? Maybe is it like a, <laughs> is it like a trainer for when you go to the park? So, um, I mean, you can, you can, you, you can definitely do the park without doing fast yeah. pass. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely can. I mean, you won't be. It's it's like it depends on how how casual you want to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like if there's certain stuff you guarantee that you want to do, the Genie Plus and the Lightning Lanes, that's the best way to do it. Yeah. Okay, okay. Like but I, if I, you're if you're just there on a lark, yeah, and you know, you don't need to do all that stuff. Like like but, if you if you're if you're like like I'm going for three days and I probably won't be back for another three years, I want to do X, Y, and Z. Exactly. make this yeah. happen that's yeah. that's yeah. when you really should but if you're like exactly. i know a friend of the show chris taylor who got married at disney <laughs> world has i has had season passes and i think goes three times a year at the minimum uh, from what i can tell on his facebook uh so <laughs> i imagine he doesn't do that as much and just no i would imagine at not point. at all no. or or orlando he, people. he might just go there one day just to stand on the line for rise of the resistance and leave yeah yeah, yeah. so uh absolutely so uh, so 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 we we got that going on <laughs> um um i know i know you brought some toys back that you showed off on the uh, wrestling mayhem show mike uh, which um, I'm sure are within reaching distance there. Well, of course, Sorg. I mean, come on now. Do you think do you think I'm a man who doesn't, you know, come prepared for these things? There you go. I should have gave you more time to prepare on that. Oh, sorry so, about sorry, that. Sorry. So, no, it's okay. It's, it's right next to me. <laughs> Yay! So, oh man. It, it's it's right next to me. So um so this is the lightsaber. Mm -hmm. Uh for, for the audio listeners, you'll hear something in a second. But uh, I had to make my reservation to make this mm -hmm. probably a month and a half before our trip mm -hmm. um, and reservations sold out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like um, I didn't know what, like what my day was going to be looking like at Hollywood studios, but I just grabbed the, I think there were only three reservations available when I went on. And that's a month and a half before the day I was going to be there. They do do walk-ups that you do um, do do walk-ups. Um, but you will have to wait because I mm -hmm. accidentally ended up in a walk-up line to build a lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, that's what I'm in line for. Yeah. <laughs> you but, do that um, a lot at Disney. You go, is this a line? Are you in line? Is this a mm -hmm. line? And then you try to figure out who is in line for what. That is 90% yes. of your Disney trip. 
<laughs> they're, they're, not, they're not properly uh, <laughs> adequately marked or anything like that, or they're just that overflowing. Um, if you look in a cluster, just ask what the cluster is for. Yes. Hey, hi, what are we doing here? Yeah. Hi, yeah. What, what are we? Hi, hi. And, Sorg, Sorg, like I said, like Comic Con. Oh, there you yeah, go. It is. Comic-Con and everybody knows thing. it. So everybody's already asked about 10 other people. So everybody totally is cool with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. Mm-hmm. We're yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, this is the thing. Yeah, yeah this is the thing. So, boy, I mean, it's like when we were at that AEW show and we were trying to figure out what line we were in to try to get T-shirts at the end of the night. Because <laughs> they, they, they intersected each other from halfway around the arena. <laughs> and we're like, are, are you in line for, are we, are we so, for ice so cream one line t-shirts? was for shirts and one line was for ice cream? No, the ice cream was easy. Actually, the ice cream started okay. coming to us. So that, ah, that was a whole okay. other thing. But that's a wrestling mayhem show thing. Yes. Um, so 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 what so you got you got your lightsaber there it is so yeah so um you, I got to the uh the saber building mm-hmm. and what they do when uh you get there is they get they um have you scan a QR code a lot of QR codes around here. yeah makes sense a lot of QR makes sense. um so they have me scan one and they have four separate um building blocks you have for your lightsaber and everything on this lightsaber like I can unscrew it and buy new props for it. If I wanted to, uh, I'm pretty happy with how mine came out, but all the stuff like completely unscrews and you can order different parts for the lightsaber if you want. Nice, nice. Now, I saw a version of this when I did. Uh, you know, I've been to Disney Springs twice, which is adjacent to Disney World and basically is the public like shopping center. Right. And it's where I got engaged. Uh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> uh, and and they do have like um, they do have a lightsaber building and they have like a Avengers gauntlet making thing, but they're not mm-hmm. like that. They're the no no they're those, the, those are those are different. Those are like the I want to say cheaper uh, uh, like the the ones where you go you know you, well, you they're you definitely boot. the monetarily cheaper version. Yeah, yeah, yes, they are. But yeah, yeah. but they're, they're like the plastic ones where you can kind of throw your arm and it and it extends kind of thing and it goes. Yeah, they're also the ones where you don't like. Cry if you happen to drop it. That's true. Oh. That's true too. Yeah. I'm really interested because because actually Katie and Aaron got me uh, a, a really nice light, like one of those light up lightsabers like that. I, I'd really interested to see like the build compared to that. Um, mm-hmm. and, and it's see, probably see pretty similar. Probably pretty, yeah. Just but, but mine's definitely not like a take apart one like yours is. Well, a, yeah, like a configurable one. Yeah, it's like pretty much all together. Um, but uh, it's. <laughs> I don't know. I you know I take a lot of pictures of my TV, especially for wrestling, and I don't know if anybody notices. I have that lightsaber, and then I have another lightsaber that's actually um, barbecue tongs. Uh, but it, so I just kind of have a crossover thing. But so that's awesome. So so I I love you have to make a reservation. Oh, there it is. There it is lit up. I had to turn it on. <laughs> it it's awesome. Yeah. But um. Yeah. But yeah. So. They basically they bring you into this room and once you they only bring you in once you've picked out uh what what uh version of the lightsaber you're gonna be building and then from there you have options too. Mm-hmm. So uh they, they have the stuff on the QR code. They also have a nice pull out drawer where you can see and feel all of the uh all the different grips and stuff that you'd be using for your lightsaber. So you have a very well informed decision because you know it is a little bit more money so you know you want to make sure you're getting exactly what you want and uh when you get there you also get your choice of uh kyber crystal which are, there's actually a plastic crystal inside here that tells you what color your lightsaber is going to be nice um the colors they had available that that come with the uh experience are blue green red and purple you can also go a little bit extra and get white or yellow if you wanted to be Ahsoka Tano or Rey Skywalker. Mm-hmm. So uh, those are a little bit extra. I think I think they weren't that much to adjust them, but uh, you can definitely do that if that's more your jam. That's awesome. But you can also get like different grips and stuff. Like They had another grip where you could do the um, Darth Maul blade. Uh, not, not Darth Maul, uh, Kylo Ren blade, where it has the two extenders, and those will also be in the color of your... Uh, of your kyber crystal nice 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 yeah so, so I, you have to talk a little bit more about where it's savvy's workshop i mean, did you did you get a chance to like really look around the place when you were oh, in yeah. there it's phenomenal it's it's a full weapons place and savvy's in the corner and he's like chilling he's got a little fence he's behind there and he's doing a thing and the animatronics are of course amazing um 
some really cool things is like a full size uh what's they have like animal heads on the wall of all you know character and um so I, I wasn't in there to build a lightsaber and just was looking around and ended up talking to a gentleman for a while. I had a, a button on. I should have mentioned that. It was um, what I'm celebrating. And it was like cancer survivor. So that was really, really cool. Because um, I I could go into a whole thing about how like so many people working at Disney kept congratulating me. And telling me their own like family cancer stories or their personal cancer stories. Which was really, really amazing. Um, I also got free blue milk. And a couple of free cupcakes <laughs> out of it, which was phenomenal, and I was greatly appreciated. So I ended up chatting. the the One of the the folks working in there walked over and said something about you know my cancer thing, a badge, and he walked me over to Savvy, and he's like, "Hey, Savvy, pay attention to me." And he's like, rawr, rawr. "You know, they just make these you know whatever the noises are," and he's like, "Look at her button," and and he's like, rawr, rawr. <laughs> and so, so wait what is savvy is he like a like like is it like a mascot thing is it is like, kind of like he's kind of like like a wado like someone someone who would be a part of the pod okay. he looks like it like a hammerhead shark he's the brown guy that kind of looks like a hammerhead shark okay. his eyes in here like his neck okay. kind of goes like that okay and so he yeah he's in the corner kind of like overseeing things and like he's reading my button and then he says a bunch of stuff <laughs> stuff that i can't understand and the person working, the guy working was like, he just gave you a blessing. <laughs> and I was like, that's so sweet. Like, it was so sweet. Like, I was just like tearing up that like they did all this for me. And and he was, you know, and I was like, this is amazing. So he starts explaining like everything. And the, the guy working there, not savvy, was explaining the <laughs> things that we were looking at. And he's like, in the timeline, this is Galaxy's Edge is 30 years after the Mandalorian. Mm hmm. And he will, he's like, look around and you'll notice some things. And like, you'll see Mando's helmet is up on the wall. And he's like, I have my own guess as to why Mando's helmet's on the wall. And, you know, that he, Savvy bought this helmet most likely because I, I, there's, there's no spoilers. We're, 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 we're away from the we're, Mandalorian. We're, we're guessing. Yes. We're in, we're in the realm of guesswork. We're, and then he's like, I, he's like, if I had a guess, that he probably gets rid of his armor and goes off with Grogu. And I'm like, I like this ending. I like this idea. <laughs> and he's like, and up there is a General Grievous. And you can't tell if it's a skull or like a, a mask. Uh, so he's like, I don't know what conditional G G General Grievous is in his point. And like, it was so interesting that they like Disney had worked in all these little things, mm -hmm. which Disney does in, mm -hmm. in like sneak peeks and, and, and things that we won't understand till years later. And be like, oh, that's why that was on the wall and this thing's on the wall. But it was like that kind of like cool sneakiness that I really enjoyed. And there's also like little touches on the ground, like. If you look on the ground, like, and we should first of all say Galaxy's Edge. Oh, yeah, we should just go into Galaxy's Edge. You don't realize you're in Florida. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. they use the terrain there and they use like a bunch of trees and stuff in the background to make it look like you are on a desert outpost. Like, legitimately, it, it doesn't look like you're in Central Florida or whatever. It looks like you are on an abandoned planet. Mm -hmm. That, that, the Millennium Falcon just happens to have landed <laughs> in. Like it looks, you can't see. The only power lines you see are power lines you would see in Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like you don't see any trace of the outside world. You don't even see any traces of the other rides in the park. Mm -mm. <laughs> like you don't even hear it. You you don't even hear like Toy Story Land going off. You don't hear the Muppets or anything like that. You are like as soon as you walk through the gates. You're in a new world, mm -hmm. and um, Dutters, I don't know if you if you um, downloaded the Disney Play app. Yes. Did you do any of the hacking? No, I did not. I did not get a chance to do that. Okay. Did you hear about it though? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Sorg, if you download the Disney Play app, mm -hmm. um, while you're in the parks, you can choose to be either Resistance or First Order. And it brings up a data pad thing mm -hmm. where you can actually go to certain locations in the park and either hack a TIE fighter or like try and do specific missions for the resistance or for the first order. And I have a feeling this is kind of like the beta version of what 
the Star Wars Hotel is going to be at. They're opening up uh, next next month, or not not next month, next year. Is it is it the Dave's Play Disney Parks app? There we go. You can yes. see it a little bit better now. Play Disney Parks. So well, there it is. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, like, thank thank you, partner. Uh, because you can go to um, different tools. Uh, it tells you like what you've done as a first order, what you've done as resistance, what you've done as a scoundrel. Like, they give you. There's so much stuff you can do. Like I. I got a Batu villager outfit. It's just something I unlocked from doing, um, from hacking something there. Like, there's a whole bunch of stuff, and like, I like I was so focused on doing the rides and everything, I didn't even really have a chance to look into it all that much. But you can like get, like, uh, I scanned this droid that was just out and about in the park, and you can actually make the droids do stuff, like react to things. It's really kind of wonderful like and it's telling me i have a job that i didn't finish because you know i was too focused on other things but like <laughs> you can translate runes they give you a whole uh data pad for uh translating different runes so you can see what like what they're actually saying in the in the language nice but yeah all you have to do is type out uh what it says in the star wars languages and you'll get a translation of it. Nice. So it's, it's just really crazy, like the amount of detail they go into the, with this stuff. And, and, and this is before we're even talking about rides. Yeah. <laughs> this even this, is, about this is stuff that you just do walking around. Mm -hmm. like, like you could walk around there all day, not go on a single ride or go in a single restaurant or shop and still probably have a really fucking good time. Sorry, There's your second it. one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> But you can have a you can have a really really good time just like going into the Disney Play app and mm -hmm. just messing around with it and trying to complete jobs and stuff. Because it's something and to do while you're waiting for that ride, that Genie Pass ride, right? Just that's <laughs> I did some of that stuff while I was waiting for Rise of the Resistance, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're and they're like, take a picture when you get to the waterfall, and if you're already past that point, you can say I've already passed that. point. And they'll give you another landmark to look for while you're on the line. Hmm. So it's, just, it, 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 so it's, 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 a, it's a complete kind of AR experience at that point, right? The way they have these all integrated. And that is, that's always been a thing I've always heard about Disney is the attention to detail. And that's probably even more when you're like in, in that, like it's one thing probably going to like, you know, Disney, you know, the 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 Cinderella's like castle Kingdom. and things yeah. like that in Epcot or something, but it'd be something that you you know that you're a lifelong fan of <laughs> to go into. You know, I'm sure it's not disappointing for anybody that's like the super fan uh, uh, geekery uh, of, of these kinds of things, right? So awesome. So what else? I do? Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they even do that with Toy Story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like Toy Story, there are, there are other games you can play like in Toy Story Land and. The, the conceit of Toy Story Land is that you're in Andy's backyard. Mm. Like, everything there, from the chairs you sit on at the cafes to, like, all the fencing, it's all larger versions of toys. Mm -hmm. like Tinker toys, Lego blocks, all sorts of things of that. Like, the, uh, oh, I was getting, I got a homemade Pop-Tart for my wife and sister-in-law, and the chairs there were made out of, like, there were little um, uh, drink umbrellas for the tables, mm -hmm. and the uh, the chairs were little baby bell cheeses. Nice, but they were like giant size, so you could actually sit in. Mm -hmm. Like it, 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 the detail, the amount of detail is incredible. That's great, and and the <laughs> the characters will interact with each other as you're walking past. So you mentioned droids. Are there like 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 little droids running around? Like like you know like little R 2s kind of uh, unless people around? have built them. No, no, because yeah. <laughs> you yeah. will there there you can build them there. You can customize. Really? Oh yeah, you can build mm -hmm. your droid from like all the pieces. Like a BB, you know, if you're looking for something like more like an R two or a BB eight unit, mm -hmm. um, and it's that's another thing. It's totally customizable, and they have personality mm -hmm. chips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, if if you are looking to. Doing the droids is is monetarily cheaper than doing the lightsaber. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, and and the best the good thing um, when you're there, uh, you can also have this stuff shipped back to you. Mm -hmm. 
So you don't have to bring it on a plane. When you get it shipped back, it's all insured too. So if anything happens to it, they'll um, they'll send you a new one. Good. So Good. I mean, you know, you don't have to worry about plane travel with any of this stuff or anything like that. Like I got a bunch of pictures taken with my lightsaber, and then I went to a store. I'm like, ship this, please. Mm-hmm. And then I got it like maybe five days later. Nice, nice. I like it. So you mentioned oh, we should also talk the photo pass. The photo so, pass. Yeah. Uh, so there's, did you get the photo pass? Um, it was really funny. I did not get the photo pass and we did not okay. <laughs> utilize the photo pass. Okay. It was, uh, yeah, but it's really funny because, but like when we were on a ride that took our picture that showed up in my phone under my yes. photo pass. Yeah. Because like, they okay. actually have a uh, Bluetooth readers. Like if you turn your location on for the app, mm-hmm. they can tell where you are in the parks and they'll have a Bluetooth reader for your line rides. Nice. Yeah, it's nice. wild. Yeah. But yeah, uh, the photo pass, they have so many different um, places in all of Disney where you can get like professional photos done. And like really, really good. There was actually even one where uh, they would give you lightsabers that were already made and you could take pictures like having lightsaber fights and stuff like that. But it was just wild. So tell me about the rides. <laughs> how was there were no it, rides it, we didn't ride anything. <laughs> yeah we didn't go on any rides we just all. took pictures and played on our phones the whole Obviously. time that was it right mm-hmm. yeah absolutely um Dutters, where you want to start oh geez uh do you want to start with galaxy's edge since we're kind of there already yeah, or yeah. work sure. in the, work that, the other that part? works um i i have to say i was at uh hollywood two night two days uh the first day did not get on rise of the resistance at all um because it broke down frequently and it sounds like this is a thing that happens frequently Mm. with it right Mm -hmm. now still um so there was no way for us to there was no way with everything else going on that i was able to ride the rise of the resistance uh at all in the first day i wrote other things but didn't ride that um uh so I guess we'll start with Rise of Resistance first and then we'll yeah. move to the other one. Sorry, I was like, there's so many things. I'm trying not to explode with the things. Um so um I my my rise I, I got there at eight fifteen because I was only in Hollywood Studios for one day and immediately got on the line for Rise of Resistance. And I was on the line for about an hour and ten minutes and the ride broke down mm. so much so to the point where they kicked us all off the line. Mm-hmm. But because we were on the line, they gave us a free extra lightning lane pass for all of our uh, tickets and magic bands. So we could go on any ride we wanted immediately. Nice. Yeah, which was nice. So I got to do uh, one of the the more exp- the, the ones you have to pay for where it was already sold out. But I'm like, let's go see if this works. And it worked right away. So I was able to get on that. which was lovely. And that was the uh, Slinky Dog Dash. But anyway, back to Rise of the Resistance. Um, I, I talked to someone and he told me to come back later in the day because I guess the problem with Rise of the Resistance is because there's so many people and the way the line works, like there, there's a, there's a normal standing line and then there's like a, um, a little mini ride that's kind of like an elevator, but it's like a completely immersive experience. Mm-hmm. And that's where the disconnect is a lot of times where sometimes that will be the, uh, the choke point for the ride itself so uh so sometimes they have issues with that but that's that was what he was telling me where mm-hmm. is usually the problem with rise of the resistance hmm. but uh yeah so that is uh what would you think would you think of the line first of all well so <laughs> with me and the rise of resistance so on the second day we were there um the plan was just to buy the the lightning lanes uh for rise of the resistance because definitely was going to ride and um my niece decided she wanted to ride too so it was Aaron my sister-in-law and my niece and I who all went over to the park ridiculously early uh so we could be there for what they call rope drop but they don't really rope drop at Hollywood because it's kind of a steady stream it doesn't seem like they rope dropped at least that day because they were we got we were there way before they opened and they were like okay come on in and we we didn't run because we got yelled at for running a couple times, but we moved quickly to the line for the rise of the resistance. And the time we, by the time we got there, um, well, one thing for sure, my niece was dressed as Ray and every single employee 
addressed us as, addressed her as princess mm. or your highness um which was amazing to see and it was so adorable and like they were you know she she kind of caught on what was going on uh so by the time we walk because the queue line is extremely long for this ride obviously because it's a long line and by the time we walk through everything we were maybe we stood still without moving for maybe five minutes because mm-hmm. of the, the way we got in there so quickly you know what i mean like not the, like the normal stopping points but like maybe just like waiting in line and um so I got to do it twice that day and like going with my niece, like I said, was hilarious because at one point you, you have some interactions with, um, with the, um, Oh, I just blanked out on what they are. The first order. Mm-hmm. And, um, they, the, they, you know, kind of walk up and down your line and they ask you questions about plans and the, they tell you before you go in, you know, make sure you don't say anything about the plans. So they went to when the first order was like, we're patrolling the line, went to my niece and they're like, you look familiar. And like, we need to tell us the plans. And she's like, "Mm -mm." (laughs) because she was told not to say, and she said, "Mm -mm." and when I went on the ride later that night, there was another family near us. And the, 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 one of the kids, they asked questions, kept telling the person working about the Guinea pig King, which I have no idea where that came from. And then, like, you know, the person, the, the interaction in, in, in is, is just phenomenal. Like before you even get on the ride, the, the interaction with the, the crew and everybody is just phenomenal. And they have so much, you know, like they, they're having fun with it. It's great. Um, but like, I didn't get to see much of the line cause it was like, bew, 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 and then go. And then we were in and, and, um, Oh, at the point where, um, like where they have, I think it was like the, um, when you were before things happen, think like when the lines things shut down there, they had my niece push a button and everything went dark in this room mm-hmm. and they were like, hurry up. You have to come over here and push this button to turn things back up. And she started everything back up again. <laughs> so it was like really cool that they were being so interactive, but yeah, so I got to ride it twice and long, long story short, didn't see much of the line, but got to ride it twice. <laughs> um, ended up on both cars. Cause there's kind of two separate cars when you go through and you get, a little different experience depending on which car you're in it's like you come up on a different spot on the ad at uh so you see a different angle of things there and there um but uh both i i don't know mike i was i was just a kid like i was just like pure joy absolute pure joy on that ride it was so, so immersive so we, we actually lost mike apparently he's lost power where he's at oh no it's all thanks <laughs> so, to me i do good thing we have you in studio <laughs> good uh, and i can is, talk forever this point uh but, but uh, so yeah so you're you're on and, and, and it's and it's way more it's it's the immersive level is like even though you watch you could watch every video you can see every photo and listen to every account you do not get it until you're in there and mm-hmm. like holy cow like the room where you see, you know, you walk in with the, um, my brain is just not working today. <laughs> you go, Mike, you're supposed to be here helping me with words and thoughts. Um, but like the size of the rooms are huge. They're absolutely huge. Stormtroopers. There we go. Brain, um, is, is massive. It's way bigger than you could ever expect. Mm-hmm. Um, you go on like the ad ads. I freaking blew my, I love ad ads. You know, I love ad ads and like blew my mind, like how you are nose to nose with an ad at at one point, like you go down and then you're up and you're nose to nose with an ad. Is, is this like, is this like a physical thing or is it like a, a computer kind of, VR Oh no, no, kind of you're in a ride. Okay. You're in a ride ride. Okay. So this it's is, more like, like, like the, uh, the exterminator here at Kennywood, right? Yeah. Like okay. where you're, you're actually on and seeing these things and okay. it's not the VR of the other, cause some of the other rides that Disney. there's a lot of VR rides at mm-hmm, Disney mm-hmm. and, and, uh, but this is not one of them. This is like huge scenes and huge, you know, the animatronics, lots of holograms, lots, <laughs> which are just so good. Nice. And, and like going back and like, I'm glad we went a second time because it was like, there were times like the first, like, how did they do this? And then you're like, oh, that's how they did that. That's mm-hmm. neat. Mm-hmm. That's sneaky. But it was definitely well, wor- well worth it. Well worth I, the pass. I would have paid more for the pass. Like, even <laughs> it was that good. I would have got up earlier in the morning. It was that good. Oh, that's awesome. So, so what else is there? You know, uh, you know, of those experiences. You know, we talked a lot about Star Wars, but you know, what what else uh, kind of kind of stuck out to you was an awesome, you know, thing. Oh gosh. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna have to go back to one more Star Wars thing. Okay, I'm no so problem. Sorry. No problem. Uh, but where you get to uh, drive the Millennium Falcon. Mm. That was a uh, little bit more of a. It's a, that's more of a VR experience. 
Um, it's if you've ever done star tours where you're kind of feeling like you're going up and down and over and around and stuff. Um, but they're like kind of a little bit smaller areas. You go in, uh, Mike gave me the amazing tip that, um, I would not have been able to ride this ride as many times as I did. If he would have told us that, uh, you go in as a single rider because they try there's six like spots in each of these cockpit areas and they try to have them filled every time because each of those six cockpit seats does a thing you have you mm -hmm. are either a pilot or you're fixing or you're a gunner and uh, so they try to keep these fill filled so the single riders you pretty much just walk on and we were able to ride multiple times because of that because it was like this is cool i mean we weren't riding with people we knew but which is fine and um but i didn't realize how much control the pilots actually had on the little the area we you know the little car we were, whatever you want to call it that we were in um and so my niece drove and my sister-in-law drove, and it was like, clunk, 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 and it was definitely tossing <laughs> us around, and I, I was laughing so hard that I was crying, because it was so funny, because they're like, nose up, and my niece doesn't know that, because she was controlling that part, like, you pull back to go up, and push forward to go down, so she was, like, trying to do nose up, so she would push forward. <laughs> and we're trying we're like getting jostled around and you're just trying to tell her and she's like doesn't you know can't hear us and we're laughing so hard but yeah so that was a lot of fun too um as far as like other things beyond galaxy's edge um i didn't get to ride the slinky ride uh slinky dog ride um but i did get to do the i did get to do frozen mm -hmm. which was this frozen sing-along the kids absolutely adored <laughs> it um they do have characters on the stage and they kind of throw in some dad jokes for everybody else but that was it was if you have kids that was absolutely worth it Great. uh for them to see we got to see muppets again that's it's pretty much the same muppets show that was there all those years ago but it doesn't matter because the muppets are amazing um and still a lot of fun uh got to do they have like this aliens it's, it reminds me of the whip at kennywood except it's much higher tech and you kind of rotate around a little bit more which was a lot of fun too um at the at, but it was like funny because i felt like we spent most of the same spot like we spent most of the time in galaxy's edge at hollywood oh there's also if you have kids there's a disney channel dj and it's a, it, he's up on stage playing hits and like Vampirina comes out and, <laughs> and Doc McStuffins comes out and he's like remixing all these and the kids are dancing and they're loving it. <laughs> and you're like, it's some a rave, but there's just kids everywhere. <laughs> That's great. But it was, yeah, so that was, that was a good part of like Hollywood. Um, Wow. Yeah. And, and I think we lost Mike for a bit here. So and, and it sounds like like he talked about like the breakdown and everything. I know he had an issue that he told, told me about. They had an issue with their hotel. And yeah. I think he has like he thought they were getting like like extra passes for like something at the hotel. But he showed up and they were like, no, those are extra passes to come back. That's nice. <laughs> so yeah. he has like some extra tickets for that. So it, it sounds like I mean, it, it's really a giant hospitality experience there. I mean, it's its own city, you know, from mm -hmm. what I hear about from the I mean, I've seen some of the documentaries on Disney Plus and everything about it, you know, through the years, too. So so what, so so for the very first person that's looking to get into Disney World wants to go for that very first time. Maybe somebody who has an extra day when they're in town <laughs> for, for work or something, as I find myself. Uh, what is your advice for that first time, first experience? As far as which park to visit? Uh, just, just generally. Like, generally? like just, a, okay, you know, let's say if I, you know, for me, you know, I think most of us want to see the Star Wars stuff, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. So if you want to do that, uh, definitely, like we talked about, like if you pick out what you want to do in advance. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the park hopper, if you're going for one day, is a must. Mm -hmm. So you're able to go to those multiple parks. Like, for example, we went to Epcot and I didn't we didn't have as much fun in epcot as we did the other parks mm -hmm. there's very few things to ride in epcot epcot's more of like a world experience right yeah it's like little communities little world experiences uh most folks who are of drinking age go to drink around the world uh -huh. and i think that's what mike was there for yeah and which is which is <laughs> i have absolutely no problem with that and i think that's awesome but at certain points you could tell when the crowd was drunk <laughs> and it was like Man, i can imagine a drunk disney crowd oh my gosh so you do you know figment like the purple, so like Disney had the figment Inside of your imagination. Out? Inside Out? No, figment no. was a character they had at Disney that they tried, I think they tried to make a thing outside of Disney. This was for years and years and years ago when I we went. And um, it's a purple 
dinosaur or dragon. I'm sorry, he's a purple dragon. And he's the figment of your imagination. Okay. And um, they used to have this, you know, he's a puppet and you rode through. And so they, figment went away kind of, and then they brought figment back. And figment's, a, a, it's supposed to be a kid's ride, but it's incredibly interactive, mm-hmm. especially in the new version. And I'm not interactive, um, like immersive, um, especially the newer version. And it was like, really cool to see some of the effects there was like um if you hear us talk about like stuff in the haunt industry like pepper's ghost Mm -hmm. and like that kind of you know so like kind of interesting things and reflections and mirrors and stuff but there was a lot of cool things to see on that ride so figment is mostly a you could call it a kid's ride family friendly ride and one of the guys in line behind us was so drunk that his i'm assuming younger cousin was holding him up and it was a whole family and it was just like i can't believe you're this drunk to ride figment and you're pro- <laughs> like I, I i'm sure this dude probably vomited mm-hmm. on the ride because mm-hmm. it was a lot i mean there's a lot of movement it was great but um but yeah it was very interesting you know what i mean like there was a point where i was like oh this is and my everybody wanted to ride well not everybody the kids wanted to ride inside the big golf ball which is <laughs> Uh, that ride has not changed. Um, mm-hmm. uh, it's supposed to be like the evolution of technology. And <laughs> uh, based on what we thought technology would be in the 70s, right? Yeah, yeah. and <laughs> things have been updated, but it's still, it's painful. I mean, it's, it's I mean, it, you got to do it if you've never done it. Yeah, um, yeah. And, but um, you have to do it. But it was, it was a little rough to do this ride, especially, oh, sorry. That, that experience, yeah. Yeah, so, but that also, Epcot also has the Ratatouille ride, which if you go to Epcot, you have to absolutely ride the Ratatouille ride mm-hmm. because it's both VR or it's, a, like, it's, I guess it would be, it's partially VR, it's partially immersive, it's partially, like, it's, and there's no track and it's, it's a blast. But anyways, sorry. Um, but Epcot, we could have done a half day and gone mm-hmm. somewhere else and mm-hmm. been fine with it. Um but um yeah so make sure you kind of figure out where you want to go in advance um there's not a lot of rides like like i said in epcot there's not a lot of rides in animal kingdom so if you're not if you're looking for rides you're going to magic kingdom Mm -hmm. um if you're looking for um there's there also seem to be more things to do in magic kingdom and that's probably because this is that's kind of their big park down there um but um yeah so plan if you can get the genie do the genie plus um do the lightning lane stuff so you can kind of have a plan with that um figure out where you're gonna eat um if you wanted to make reservations like mike mm-hmm. said we got into bell's castle but he wasn't able to when they tried to make reservations there's plenty of places to do mobile ordering on the app which is phenomenal so if you're like oh gosh um, there was points that so we got the um we were ordering food like right as we were all getting on a ride so be ready when we were done and be like right there so that was really really nice to be able to do that um and um but yeah so i mean you can do a lot Mm -hmm. at a park in a day okay easily and like i think what a disadvantage we ran into is we went during one of the busiest weeks of the year yes and they may have made uh, adjustments thanksgiving week yes Yeah. yeah so that was so there was a lot of our trip had been postponed several times at this point. So with uh, COVID and everything else. Um, so by that, this is kind of the week we ended up being able to beat. My brother was able to get mm-hmm. off and mm-hmm. my mom, you know, everybody was able to get off. So it worked out well, but it was just, I would not suggest going the week of Thanksgiving because it was so packed. Yeah. Especially yeah. for fireworks at night at uh, Magic Kingdom. It was like, this is a lot. Well, and, and I know Mike, you said that he, he did the holiday thing, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that was an experience too. Uh, I think I saw some pictures from that, and he, he says it was it was a really, really, really cool experience. So that's cool. So well, I don't think we're going to get Mike back. I don't know what's happened up there in, in Beacon, New York. Yeah, uh, but <laughs> we got power here, so we're going to wrap this up here. Uh, uh, Katie, you got you got pictures and stuff on your social media, right? I oh think, yeah, right? I get it. yeah, I, I definitely, I, I still have. I, I was so exhausted at the end of every night because we were there. Mm-hmm. Um, almost uh, like I was Aaron and I were there almost the whole time every day um, that we were there. So we were exhausted by the end of the day and getting up early again. So I barely posted things. So yes, I will make sure all the pictures are up by the time you watch this, they'll be up on my social medias. Um, So Kate Marie PGH on Instagram will probably have most of them. There you go. Check it out. Um, Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Mad Mike for joining us. Of course, he usually joins us over on the wrestling mayhem show series of shows so uh and we are usually uh uh sometimes not as there's more swearing and uh and 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 we're not usually agreeing on as much so so go check that out and we do have a lot of geek chat on the monday mayhem warriors over there on the wrestling mayhem show too 
Uh, so thank you. Thank you, Katie, for joining us. Thank you, Mike, for wherever you are in the world. <laughs> so uh, for joining us, uh, this has been your awesome audience. Yeah. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.